Thanks, uh, Count Corla. Friday marks the first anniversary of the brutal, illegal invasion of Ukraine, the impact of which on the psyche of, of the body politic of Europe can be compared to that of the 9-11 attacks on the US. Indeed, it may take a, a generation or more before the full implications of the decision by President Putin to put a torch to the norms of international behaviour which have governed Europe since World War II can be fully measured. The scale of horror, the deliberate tar targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure, the torture and murder of innocent people, along with the forced deportation of over 16,000 children from Ukraine to Russia, remains difficult to comprehend. What remains abundantly clear, though, what invites no debate or equivocation, is the moral impetus on the international community to give their full support to the International Criminal Court and their ongoing investigations and attempts to gather evidence on those responsible for the horrific attacks that have been visited upon a civilian population. All war crimes must be fully investigated and the perpetrators held to account. But I also have a moral responsibility here as a member of this doll to call attention to the need of the government to use its position within the international community to advocate in the strongest possible terms for the universal application of international law and the pursuit of all transgressors, including Israel, who habitually engage in war crimes against the Palestinian people. In the last year, we have welcomed over 75,000 Ukrainians to Ireland who were forced to flee their homeland in the face of Russian aggression. They represent a small portion of the 14 million Ukrainians who have been displaced by the invasion, over 8 million of which were forced to flee from Ukraine's borders. Yesterday, I, along with colleagues, met with the ambassadors of Ukraine and Moldova at the Foreign Affairs Committee, where I once again offered my party's full support to the people of Ukraine and their right to defend their territorial integrity. It is my hope that I will be able to meet both ambassadors in the near future as fellow EU citizens. We are a people who for centuries were forced to resist the ambitions of a large, aggressive neighbour drunk on its own ambition, who are absolutely convinced of their right to impose their rule on our people. Just as we, the Irish people, retain our right, the right to rule ourselves as a, a sovereign people, so must it be for the people of Ukraine. I also want to mention Moldova, a tiny nation which is in the direct line of Russian economic and military fire, yet which has performed at an extraordinary level in its efforts to provide humanitarian support to those who reach their borders fleeing for their lives. And I have stood at the border and witnessed firsthand the scale of sacrifice that the Moldovan people are prepared to make in the name of humanity. The government has a responsibility to ensure that we extend every support that we can to the Moldovan government as Russia continues its attempts to destabilise that country. The impact of the Russian invasion has been wide-ranging with huge implications for many nations, none so more than the global south. Over 300 million people on the African continent are facing food insecurity. 15 African countries import 50% of their wheat produce from either Ukraine or Russia. And with a shortage of 30 million tonnes of grain in 2022, with sharp increases and accompanying shortages of fertilisers, the impact of war is adding to the existing effects of regional instability and climate change. And it is critical that the Black Sea Grain Initiative is renewed. Ireland, like other military non-aligned states, must now take the step and lead moves towards finding a, peace, a path to peace, bringing an end to the suffering of the Ukrainian people and bring an end to this illegal war. Thank you.